As part of the process of looking at hydrogen, uh, nuclear production of hydrogen, we also evaluated the nuclear reactors that are well suited for this. These thermochemical processes, uh, the sulfur iodine particularly, do need high temperature. You need temperatures of 800, 900 degrees C. Only a few nuclear reactors can provide that temperature. Our current commercial light water reactors have outlet temperature of in the 300 to 350 degrees C range. That simply isn't high enough to drive a thermochemical cycle. Certainly could, can make electricity. You could use the electricity in electrolysis to produce hydrogen, but to go for these high efficiency processes, we need higher temperatures. The reactor that trickled to the top of the, all of these evaluations is called the um, high temperature gas cooled reactor. Uh, the, the latest version of that it, that General Atomics is developing is called the modular helium reactor. It has an outlet temperature of, eight, of 950 degrees centigrade. This is perfect temperature for driving the sulfur iodine cycle and hence we are pursuing with that development. One of the real pluses of selecting that reactor is the reactor is what they call a generation four reactor. Uh, the first set of the commercial nuclear reactors were generation one. Our current reactors are generation two. Reactors that are going into operation now, in, uh, particularly in Japan and, and China and uh, uh, France, are generation three. Uh, in the United States, we're about to begin construction on some generation three reactors. These are, are all the light water reactors. They use pressurized or boiling water as the coolant in the reactor. They're all limited to this roughly 350 degrees C temperature and thus are not well suited for hydrogen production by thermochemical processes. The gas reactor with this uh, much higher temperature is. And the benefit of, of the, uh, this generation four reactors is it relies upon the basic natural characteristics of the materials to ensure passive safety of the fuel that comes out of a nuclear reactor, only a few percent is truly waste. A large part of it is, is basically fuel that could be used again if reprocessed and recycled. But under the Carter administration in the 1977, we made a decision we weren't going to do that. We were concerned about uh, recycling of fuel, puts plutonium into process. Is there concern that plutonium could be stolen or misappropriated and used for nuclear weapons. The Carter administration said, we're going to lead the world and not do this. Well, the rest of the world did not follow us. They are recycling and reprocessing their fuel in Japan, in France, in Britain. The U.S. is now involved in this Global Nuclear Energy Partnership study to reassess that whole situation. That would allow us then to reprocess the, the fuel, take the residual material, the plutonium and the higher actinides, burn them in a, a, a reactor. And the gas cooled reactor is, is well suited for burning up that uh, residual nuclear fuel, uh, producing basically nothing from it for fission products, and reducing the waste problem by about a factor of 90%. If the reactor was used for producing hydrogen by this thermochemical process, for example, the, a single 600 megawatt thermal module would produce about 200 tons of hydrogen each day. So a four unit plant with four of those would provide enough hydrogen for 1.2 million hydrogen vehicles.